Hi, it's Movie Recap here. Today, I am going to explain an American superhero action film called Ant-Man and the Wasp. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Hot Wang 3D, here we come. Almost there. The movie kicks off with the renowned physicist Hank Pym and his wife Janet. Several years ago, while working for S.H.I.E.L.D., he discovered the magical particles through which one could shrink in size or become excessively large. Hank and his wife made suits for themselves using these particles and fought against the bad guys. In 1987, during one of their missions, they had to stop a Soviet nuclear missile from detonating. They landed on the missile and shrinked it into the size of insects. But even that, was not enough to gain entry inside of it. So, with time running out, Janet decided to risk her life. She reduced herself even further until she reached subatomic size. Then, she successfully entered the missile and destroyed it from within, hence saving the country from catastrophe. However, in the process, Janet got stuck in the quantum realm, a dimension which consists of nothing but endless void. She tried her best to regain her original size and get back to the original world, but failed. As a result, Hank believed that she passed away, and he moved on with his life. However, several years later, when the Ant-Man, Scott Lang, manages to get out of the Quantum Realm, Hank gets renewed hope that his wife is still alive, and that there is a way to get her back. And if she's still in there, she's gonna be pissed. His daughter, Hope, is also ready to help him in any way possible. Meanwhile, after the events of Captain America's Civil War, the Avengers, including Scott, are under house arrest because they violated the Sokovia Accords in Leipzig. Scott spends most of his day playing with his daughter Cassie. With the help of his best friend Lewis, he has set up a mini playground throughout the house. However, one day, when he accidentally breaks the fence with his feet, the FBI arrives to check on him. Detective Wu warns him to stay out of trouble, saying he only has three days of house arrest left. After that, he is free to go wherever he wants. Overjoyed by the revelation, Scott tries his best to pass the time. He plays the drums, practices magic, and does all sorts of stuff which he never imagined he'd do. But one day, when he gets into the tub to take a bath. He suddenly starts dreaming of playing hide-and-seek with Janet and a young Hope. Startled, he wakes up and immediately calls Hank. It is revealed that the two have not been in contact since his house arrest. Scott tells him that he had a strange vision about Janet and conveniently forgets to mention it happened while he was in the bath. But Hank thinks he's joking and ends the call. A few moments later, Scott notices something flying around the house. But before he can investigate, it sedates him, causing him to pass out. When he wakes up, he finds himself being driven somewhere by Hope. It turns out she was the insect that was flying around his house earlier. She wants him to meet her dad and help him get Janet back. Scott agrees, but just then, he realizes that he is on house arrest. He yells at Hope for taking him away when he was only one day away from being released. However, she calms him down and explains that she took off his ankle bracelet and put it on a giant ant she found in the apartment. Now, the FBI will have no clue that he is out of the house. In the next scene, they arrive at the lab, where Hank seems to have created a tunnel to the quantum realm. Scott takes a brief look at it and then starts explaining about his dream in detail. Hearing this, Hank and Hope are stunned because Janet loved to play hide and seek. They deduce that Scott has somehow connected to her after spending some time in the quantum realm. This might also mean that Janet is trying to communicate through him, possibly to give away her exact coordinates. Meanwhile, Hank reveals that although the tunnel is almost ready, they are missing a key electronic component, so they are going to meet someone who can provide it for them. Before they leave, Hank shrinks the lab to the size of a briefcase and takes it with him. Surprisingly, a transparent figure is eavesdropping on them from nearby. The three arrive outside a restaurant, but only Hope gets in. While the guys stay inside the van and monitor the situation, Hope meets a black market dealer named Sonny Birch and asks if he has the component she is looking for. The latter says yes, but he wants a substantially large sum for it. When Hope tries to negotiate, Birch refuses, saying he has other clients who can give him a better deal. Upset, Hope pretends to leave, but the very next second, she changes into her wasp suit and starts fighting with Birch's goons. She has blasters and other high-tech gadgets on her suit, with the help of which she easily defeats them. Hope then approaches Birch and snatches the 
component from him, but as she's walking away, the transparent figure from earlier attacks her. It is able to pass through any solid, which makes Hope's attacks useless. When the situation gets out of hand, Ant-Man also joins in on the fight. However, even with all of his expertise, the transparent figure manages to get away with the components. To make matters worse, it also gets inside Hank's van and steals his briefcase. The old man is furious and devastated, as the lab was his only hope of getting Janet back. After a while, Scott brings the father-daughter duo to his friend Lewis's office, because he believes that home is not safe anymore. The three then start thinking of ideas to get the briefcase back. Scott asks Hank if he knows someone who can help them in this situation, and the latter brings up his former friend, Bill Foster. It is revealed that they were very close in the past, but because of an incident, they stopped talking. Nonetheless, Hank decides to pay him a visit and ask for help. Elsewhere, the transparent entity takes off its mask and reveals itself to be a girl. Her name is Ava Starr. She keeps on phasing in and out, and by the look on her face, it is evident that she is in a lot of pain. Ava then steps inside a special chamber to control her powers and recharge. Meanwhile, Scott and the gang arrive at the university where Bill works. He is teaching his students, but as soon as he sees Hank, he sends everyone away. The two are still bitter over their past and almost get into a fight, but right then, Scott spots Detective Wu outside and stresses that they have to leave. Before going, though, Bill explains that they can locate the lab by modifying one of the suit's regulators. Hank mentions that they can't use the new Ant-Man suit because it is still in its trial phase, so Scott proposes that they use the old one. The only problem is that he gave it to his daughter, and she has taken it to school in a trophy case. Later, Scott and Hope sneak into Cassie's school, disguised as insects. Everything goes according to plan for a while, but then Scott's suit malfunctions, forcing him to hide inside a room. As he tries to fix his suit, he grows to the size of a child. Ant-Man. More like, this scene made me shit my pants, man. Fortunately, before anyone can spot them, they get to Cassie's classroom and retrieve the old suit out of her trophy case. Using the method Bill described, the trio then locates Ava's home and finds the lab. They see see her resting inside the chamber and try to sneak out without waking her up, but fail. Ava quickly knocks them out and ties them to separate chairs. In a shocking turn of events, it is revealed that her mentor is none other than Bill. He adopted Ava after her parents tragically passed away when she was a child. Following this, the movie goes into a flashback. Several years ago, when Hank was working for S.H.I.E.L.D., he had an assistant named Elias. He was very good at his work, but when Hank found out that he sold their ideas into the black market, he immediately fired him. However, this didn't stop Elias from conducting experiments. His main goal was to reach the quantum realm, and for that, he made a tunnel. Unfortunately, one day, in the midst of an experiment, the tunnel became unstable. His wife tried to escape with their young daughter, who is revealed to be none other than Ava. However, the little girl ran back for her father. Soon, the tunnel exploded, killing her parents and leaving her with destabilized molecules, resulting in her uncontrolled phasing. Now, Ava, along with Bill, wants to use Janet's quantum energy to treat her disease and bring her back to normalcy. She knows that the procedure may result in her death, but it is a risk she is willing to take. As Hank listens to all this, he suddenly holds his chest and fakes having a heart attack. He orders Bill to quickly retrieve his meds from a small box, and when the latter obliges, a swarm of trained ants are unleashed. They grow to a large size and free the trio, allowing them to escape with the lab. In the next scene, they arrive at a forest and enlarge the lab. Hank tries his best to work the device, but has trouble doing so. Just then, Scott starts acting like Janet and enters some coordinates on the computer. It turns out she has once again started communicating through his body. Janet reveals that they had been entering the wrong coordinates all this time, and that's why they couldn't even find a trace of her. She is positive that they will meet again, but she also warns them that they only have two hours to make things work. After that, the quantum realm will become so unstable that they won't be able to reach her for the next 100 years. Elsewhere, the black market dealer Birch and his goons swarm Lewis's office and ask him where Scott is. As expected, Lewis refuses to betray his friend, but he eventually speaks up when Birch injects him with a truth serum. Just then, Ava appears out of nowhere, threatens the goons to stay away from Scott, and flees. It turns out she was secretly overhearing their conversation, and now she also knows where the secret lab is based. Meanwhile, Birch calls the FBI and informs them that Scott is currently out, violating his house arrest. Fortunately, right after they leave, Lewis calls his best buddy and warns him to return home as soon as possible. Scott, using his special suit, 
pulls a Bueller and manages to do that in the nick of time. In the forest, Hope and Hank shrink their lab and are about to leave when suddenly the FBI surrounds them. One of the cops tries taking the lab away, but Ava arrives there, knocks him out, and takes the lab for herself. When Scott gets wind of this, he immediately breaks the father-daughter duo out of the FBI headquarters using his trained ants. Lewis also arrives there and decides to join them. Following this, they track the lab to a building where Bill has already started his experiments. However, he doesn't make much progress as the giant ants quickly surround him. Then, Hank uses his old suit and goes inside the quantum realm to find Janet. After the lab is shrunken again, Ava suddenly arrives and starts attacking Scott, who is now transformed into Ant-Man. In the meantime, Lewis and Hope escape in a vehicle. After a while, Scott tricks Ava and joins his friends in the car, but they are soon chased by Birch and his men. In the midst of all the chaos, Scott turns into Giant Man. Hope turns into the Wasp, and Ava once again arrives. As they are fighting all over the city, Birch takes the lab and flees to the docks, where he boards a ship to get away. Scott follows him, and this time, he turns into the largest version of Giant Man. He easily retrieves the lab, but when he is about to return to the shore, he has difficulty breathing due to his large size. Soon, he falls unconscious and drowns inside the water, but luckily, Hope rescues him. On the other hand, Hank navigates through the quantum realm using the coordinates Janet gave him until he finally locates her. After all these years of research and hard work, he has succeeded and the couple reunites with an emotional kiss. She's not even mad that he gave her up for dead for his entire life. Meanwhile, the lab returns to its original size in the middle of the city. Ava and Bill arrive there and start extracting Janet's quantum energy in hopes of saving Ava. This causes Janet, who is inside the realm, to suddenly lose energy. But luckily, before things get out of hand, Scott and Hope arrive and disable the machine, giving Hank and Janet enough time to get out of the quantum realm. When Hope sees her mom for the first time in over two decades, she cannot contain her tears and immediately goes to embrace her. After the emotional reunion, Janet notices Ava's condition, so she approaches her and touches her face. Surprisingly, the girl stops phasing. After staying in the quantum realm for so long, Janet has gained powers to do so, but Ava still needs a lot of energy to be fully fixed. As the group heads out, Birch and his goons are waiting for them. But this time, Lewis incapacitates them with the help of his friends. Soon, the police arrive at the scene and arrest the bad guys. Meanwhile, after the videos of Ant-Man emerge on the news, Detective Wu believes that Scott has violated his house arrest. He quickly goes to check, but to his surprise, Scott is there. Impressed by his sincerity, Wu declares that his house arrest is finally over. In the final scene, the movie appears to end on a happy note. Hank and Janet start living happily near a beach. Lewis finds a wealthy client, and Hope and Scott start a relationship. In the post credit scene, however, things go south. The scientist couple and Hope set up the quantum tunnel and have Scott enter it to bring back some quantum energy for Ava. However, when he is about to return, Big Dick Big Daddy Thanos snaps his fingers and wipes out half of the Earth's population. Unfortunately for Scott, Hank, Janet, and Hope are all gone. He is left clueless about what happened as the radio suddenly goes silent, Scott is now trapped in the quantum realm, with no way of escaping it. The movie ends as we are shown a small montage of the deserted city of San Francisco. Half of the population has vanished, but inside Scott's home, the large ant is still alive and enjoying himself on the drum set. Thank you for watching a mystery of the cat. See you next time, I'll be here again. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.